America is the wealthiest nation in the world, and when it comes to renewable freshwater resources, it owns 7% of the global supply, despite only having 4.3% of the world's total population. Yet right now, over 2 million Americans lack access to safe drinking water. That number is expected to grow in the next 50 years, as scientists predict several regions in the US could see their freshwater supply reduced by as much as a third, while in that time, the population is expected to grow by 28%. So what's going on with water in America? Underneath all my farms runs a big giant aquifer that's Ew. like an underground lake. That's and so I have cool. Pumping rights. Today, water's gonna be warm precious than gold and people are going to kill each other to try to get that water. Oh, hey. Let's talk about potable water. Potable water is water that is, in quotes, safe or clean to drink. That's William Sarney, water strategy advisor, innovator and investor, and Water Guy Monthly's most dapper gentleman. The risks of water scarcity are uh, profound and I would argue undervalued and underappreciated. By some estimates, we roughly have 3 million people plus that don't have access to safe drinking water in places like the Central Valley of California, uh, in the agricultural community, or the Navajo Nation. The reasons for the lack of access to potable water here varies from rising population to aging infrastructure to public policy, and many of these issues can be intensified by systemic racism. In 2014, the city of Flint, Michigan, facing bankruptcy, ended their practice of buying treated water from Detroit for their residents. The plan was to connect to a new pipeline providing water from Lake Huron. While waiting for the new pipeline, they decided to source water from the Flint River and to process that water through their own water treatment facility. After switching to the new water source and a $4 million update to their water treatment plan, the residents of Flint turned their taps on only to receive corrosive, improperly treated water. People right away said the water tasted bad, it smelled bad, it felt bad on their skin. My youngest would tell me, Mom, it's yellow and it's a filmy, gross, foamy thing, and it would smell like open sewer. Some people developed rashes, became sick. Early tests revealed fecal coliform bacteria. People have died from this damn water, and all you guys can sit up there and just pretend like it's no big deal. Perfectly safe, people. Your water is perfectly safe to drink. So it smells, so it stings, so it corrodes car engines. Drink up, Flint. People were exposed to lead, legionella, which both have, are quite deadly and can have serious health consequences. That's the very well-framed Nusha Ajami hydrologist and water policy expert. Originally, the problem was cost of delivering water to people and trying to reduce the cost, and also the system that was not well maintained for many years. Those instances are less about the technical issues and really more about public policy, small to mid-sized utilities that are aging and not well-funded, and also in disadvantaged communities uh, you start to see these uh, really human tragedies unfold. While Flint's water crisis should have been a wake-up call to Americans, little has been done to address the fact that numerous water systems across the country are on the brink of breaking down. But there's another large, looming factor in the issue of potable water. We have 19th century water laws, 20th century technologies, and 21st century problems. That plant dad, Aaron Tartakovsky, CEO of Epic Clean Tech. When you kind of look at all of those together, layered on top with climate change, uh, we have a serious problem when it comes to how we manage both our water supplies, as well as how we deal with wastewater. What climate change does, particularly as it pertains to water, is it makes everything more extreme. The dries are drier, the wets are wetter, storms are more powerful. From coast to coast, people are fleeing flames, wind, and water. Due to the impacts of climate change, we're seeing something called aridification, which is a fundamental change in the climate. Broadly in the American West, we're really seeing not a routine drought, we're seeing a persistent drought, a prolonged drought. Uh, a lot of people like to say the new normal. So there's less surface water available for agriculture, for potable water, for manufacturing. The so-called mega drought is now in its 23rd year. And that 
white ribbon you can see on the hills over there behind me, that's the old water line. Low water levels limiting the ability of, you know, barges to traverse the Mississippi in certain places. The Mississippi River is at historically low levels, which could impact the food supply and our wallets. We're seeing extreme weather events on the east coast of the U.S. that are overwhelming water utilities and communities, uh, resulting in uh, greater water pollution and damage to infrastructure. Historic flooding and droughts are stressing water systems across the country. So in regards to water, what does our future look like? One big area of innovation is water recycling. The water supply system that we have is a once true system. It takes water out of the environment, treats it, brings it to people. People use it once. It leaves through different pipelines, goes to the wastewater treatment plants, treat it, put back to the environment. This is called a linear system. We can transition from a linear approach to a more circular approach where all water is used once, twice, or many times. Now there's new technologies, everything from wastewater treatment and reuse to desalination, you know, creating new sources of water. But when it comes to the public perception around water reuse, um, there has always been a bit of a yuck factor. We have these technologies, we just need to deploy them. And once people start to actually interact with these technologies, they see that it's safe and they see that it saves them money, uh, I think there's gonna be a very wide embrace. Recycled water can reduce stress on our fresh water supply. Another exciting development for potable water technology is something that feels straight out of the world of science fiction, hydro panels. We talked to Robert Bartrop, CRO of Source Water. I didn't think of a funny thing to say about him. Where they're making water out of thin air. Our hydro panel technology uses an advanced material science that actually absorbs water from the air. It sucks it out of the air the same way that that sugar will clump when you leave the lid off a sugar bowl. We then use heat from the sun to drive thermal energy or, or hot air to condense that water um, into the panels. In my home, I have two panels and that provides all of the drinking water for my family of four. We're able to harness uh, large quantities of, of high quality drinking water from the abundant reservoir of clean water in the sky. And we're able to make a, a distilled water product that we then mineralize with calcium and magnesium providing a really high quality drinking water right into your, your fridge or to a faucet at your sink. It can at times feel like we are at the precipice of a Mad Max-like future. But overall, experts are optimistic as there has been a surge in the last five to 10 years in water innovation. Despite everything I've laid out, I am a raging optimist uh, with a dose of reality. A good example is the Salesforce building in San Francisco that has decentralized, localized water treatment. Uh, we can do that for a neighborhood. We can couple real-time data with artificial intelligence to give us forecasting capabilities. We now have technology to deliver real-time lead testing at the tap. We all uh, should be optimists. The reality is every crisis is an opportunity to rethink and reimagine how we do things. Um, look how we were able to reimagine our um, energy sector. We have an opportunity to do the same thing for the water sector, and I'm quite optimistic. I'm extremely optimistic about the future of water in the United States. I think for the first time, um, industry, governments, and communities are really aligned around the core themes. Uh, people are trying to move beyond plastic. People uh, have accepted that the climate's changing and that we need to be more efficient. I am optimistic. I am a glass is half full, uh, which I realize now is a water pun. I think that this is very much a golden age when it comes to water innovation.